Hello boys and girls. So in this video we are going to talk about ordinal types that go beyond infinity, that is beyond the smallest infinity among the ordinals omega. Um, in uh, the video I did actually yesterday um, I introduced the Neumann ordinals uh, which is the representation of just in this case just the finite uh, natural numbers in set theory one possible one and uh, in this video we are going to go beyond just the finite ordinals just beyond the finite numbers in the theory of ordinal numbers we are going to go how do they say to infinity and beyond uh, in particular we are going to implement an order on the natural numbers so it will be still an, an order on uh, a countable set that uh, corresponds to the order type omega squared so infinity um, to the power of two and straightforward will be infinity to any um, finite power so infinity to the power of seven or something like that um, and uh, so I will only cursorily I don't know sure if that's a word, but I will only say a few things on ordinals in general. Uh, we are going to see um, some uh, limit ordinals. So these are always the the ordinals when you reach a new number without just um, taking the successor operation. So if you recall, if you saw in this video, I introduced the set theoretical implementation of the successor operation in in this picture here um, we start with the number zero and then we take the successor to the number one and the successor to the number two and so on and so forth and you can you know apply the successor operation of course as often as you want you, in a countable fashion you you can uh, go on and on and on and on and you will never come to a number that's bigger than any other number so a limit ordinal is one where you have to do something else um, in the set theoretical realization, this will be introduction of a set that contains all numbers, so that contains an infinite countable amount of numbers, and that will be omega. And once you have that, when, once you have that uh, as a representation in set theory at least, then you can easily count beyond that. And we're going to make a sense of this today. We're going to show how this is uh, actually a relevant f f uh, notion. So you have infinity plus one, infinity plus two, and so on and so forth. And eventually, um, if you then complete this limit a second time, you have infinity times two, and you get go on and so on, infinity times three, blah, 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 blah. And then if you do this operation, um, like this jumps an infinite, countable infinite number of times, then you arrive at omega squared. And this is um, the order type, meaning the, the yeah, the, uh, the, the, the kind of class of, uh, orders still on a countable set. Still, we are still ever going to work on the natural numbers. That is an infinite number of times beyond uh, the infinite. And once you're there, uh, you can um, then also uh, go on if you like and uh, go to higher um, expressions. But the implementation that we are going to target today is the infinity squared. So I mentioned the order type. I will again not dwell too much on it and you can check out the some of the big p articles or notes you find online uh, but it will make sense in a second when i do the implementation so i would say let's jump right into it i have here a python file that i fittingly called less.py uh, python less.py and um, before we go to the more elaborate ordering of the natural numbers um, let's actually implement the basic operation so this this is really in in, in, uh, in python already you have already an implementation you can for example ask is three smaller than five and it will tell you yeah that's true um, we're going to implement that and then uh, go beyond that and uh, see how how the, these things tie together how they go together um, i want to mention that we're going to be we're going beyond infinity on the ordinals and not on the cardinal numbers so i will describe the infinity of um, ordinal type uh, omega squared and there's much beyond you know you can go uh, omega to the power of 
seven, you can actually go omega to the power of omega. And still that will only be an, an ordering on the natural numbers. It will still be countable. And in fact, you can go on, you can go of omega to the omega to the omega to the omega. And even if you have that, um, you can then go beyond that and, and, and consider um, the, for example, after this omega to the omega to the omega comes uh, so-called epsilons. And these are still countable. So they are still not as big as, for example, the real numbers, for example. And uh, you can then iterate this and have um, epsilon one and epsilon epsilon for other uh, ordinals and so on and so forth. You can go on and go on and go on. And even if you're like beyond these epsilons, you can go beyond that and consider like, I mean, you can look into that if you want uh, ordinals that you cannot even describe anymore the large countable ordinals, but nevertheless, um, as uh, as far as infinities go, if you look at the um, the size of the set as cardinality, then the number of elements, then there are, uh, even these everything I just talked about, this will still be countable ordinals. And um, if you were, for example, to take the natural numbers and consider all subsets, the set of all subsets of natural numbers, that would be in size bigger than anything I described here. Um, and in fact, you can define the smallest um, the smallest set that is it does not correspond to a countable ordinal. And in set theory, that would be the set containing all these countable ordinals. That would be the first uh, uncountable Aleph uh, number. So the first uncountable set that may or may not be uh, this, the continuum that I just talked about. But nevertheless, this is all. This goes all beyond uh, what I will talk about here. I will not talk about cardinal numbers. I will just talk about ordinals and just uh, countable ones at that, and just very conservative countable uh, numbers at that. Um, this might all sound a little bit um, like esoteric, but you will see in a second how it makes sense to talk about omega squared. So. Okay, but before we go to that, let's implement just the, the normal um, smaller relation. And this will be the, the standard smaller relation on the natural numbers. And for that sake, uh, let's call it omega less. Okay, there will be the less operation of two numbers, a and b. And it will, I mean, I can, could now say, you know, a smaller b, that would be it. Okay, let's not be that boring. Uh, let's actually give an uh, implementation. So what we can do, for example, is we say, for k in range b, we go up to all range b. And in case that um, a is one of those b's, then it means a uh, was before these numbers in b. So we can return true, right? Otherwise, return false. So this is actually a, a solid implementation of, of this model relation. So print. Um, let's say omega less uh, four and one. Um, and I forgot, of course, a colon here. Then that will be true. Um, three smaller than four, still true. Four smaller than four, that's false. And of course, five smaller than four, also false. Okay, um, so let's actually define some example pairs that, and we will later take the same examples and compare it with the omega uh, squared um, order type that we implement. So let's consider a bunch of pairs. Um, let's take six is of course smaller than eight on the natural numbers with the standard order. 12 is of course smaller than 17 and 22 is of course smaller than 30, right? So we can say for pair in pairs, um, print please the omega less of these uh, pairs and uh, for that I can unwrap them like this. So what will we get? Uh, true, true, false, right? Because uh, 6 is smaller than um, 8, 12 is smaller than 17, 22 is smaller than 20. So this relation is true, true and then false. Um, okay, but now consider the following. I, I will uh, give you an example where we're going with this. Um, let's say you're um, a dancing teacher and you uh, 
um, invite people for a dance, uh, but you, you can just say come or come, don't come. And um, let's order your reaction to finding out how many people actually will show up. So you send out a, a like, let's say, you say anybody can come and there are like possibly infinite number of people. And to your liking, you want it to be a perfect dance. And for that sake, you would like to have everybody have a partner, right? So you would love for the number of people who show up to your dance be an even number. That would be best. And also, the more people show up, the better, right? Um, so if, um, for example, let's say under the even numbers, if 20 people show up, that would be better than if 16 people show up because it's more people and your, your uh, dance is more successful. Let me move that over. Um, but uh, let's say if an uneven number of people show up, then this would really like uh, ruin your day because then there was one people, one person would be alone and uh, you would feel bad for the person, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so let's uh, say how like this, this would re really make you sad. And so uh, independent of how many people show up, if that, um, an uneven number show up, that's definitely worse than if an even number show up. So what kind of ordering uh, on the number of people who come up does that induce? Well, one people coming is worse than three people coming because you want more people to come, right? And three people coming is worse than 11 people coming. But two people coming is actually better than one people coming, of course, but it's also better for you than five people coming because it's such a, uh, like, you're so, so uh, messed up, uh, you're so sad if an uneven number of people come. So that means, for example, six people coming is even better than 99 people coming because uh, the, the, your judgment of an even num number uh, having to show up is, is, uh, is more important to you. So then the order of, uh, that it induces on the natural numbers is as following. It goes one, three, five, seven, and so on and so forth, right? Um, and then after all uneven numbers, then the next, uh, the next uh, number that you have not like uh, in, in your uh, enumeration would be two and two is better than all numbers that come before, right? And four would be better than two and six would be better than four and so on and so forth. So it splits actually all numbers in, in, into two parts and the uneven numbers um, all are worse than all, all possible even numbers. And uh, so that means that six, for example, is bigger in this in this in your feeling than an infinite number of numbers, and in that sense, the six, number six comes after all uneven numbers, right? So this would be one one of the splitting uh, where uh, you have to complete an an, an infinite number of uh, pairings, um, in, in the, in, an un, uh, infinite number of possible uh, people who show up before other numbers come. And we're going to implement something along those lines, even more uh, a drastic split with more jumps. Namely, we're going to implement a very easy to compute uh, order relation that has an infinite number of splits, actually. Right? So th this is, this is the, the uh, classification of orderings that in this case we still do on, on uh, countable numbers. Right? You can also introduce the orderings on uh, on uncountably infinite numbers and somebody is terrorizing me with emails here. Um, and okay, now you will see how to very easily uh, implement an ordering on this countable in, in, infinite set with infinite many splits. So um, we're going to define uh, omega squared less on A and B. And for that sake, um, the, the, the thing we, we, we do something similar with uh, even and uneven numbers, but we're actually going to distinguish not just between even and uneven numbers, but actually how even they are in the sense that we prefer higher powers of two. So we make a split and uh, by some uh, fundamental and basic number theory, we can split any, uh, there's a comment, any uh, natural number into a power of two, right? This is one of the prime factors and to some power times some uneven number, right? So for example, the number 12 
the number 12 would be 2 to the power of 2 times 3 and the number 7 would be 2 to the power of 0 times 7 right so by the way I uh, exclude the number 0 um, here so the, this order will start at 1 um, but this split into a power of 2 or power of any prime number really and the rest is a unique uh, split so uh, in this function I will actually compute the split I will call the split of um, yeah, let's call it n and uh, how do we do that well that's actually simple so we start with the power of 2 being 0 and then while um, n is divisible by 2 um, we are actually going to divide the n by 2 right? we reduce it and then found oh there was at least one higher power of um, of two that we could uh, divide out and so once that is done once the number is not even anymore we just return this pair we, on the one hand we return the power and we return what's left of the number right so um, let me uh, give you an example of, of the split operation let me pull it out for a second so print split of 12 as I said and maybe print split of, of 7 as well and pause for a moment um, so we see the 12 as I said is 2 to the power of 2 and then times 3 and 7 is 2 to the power of 0 times 7 right this this uh, function splits it into a um, into the exponent and whatever the uneven number is that's left and my omega squared then is going to be well we both we take both numbers and um, compute the split so we, we have an uneven and an uh, um, aspect of a as well as the exponent and we do the same thing for the b as well for b and then so the ordering that I'm going to introduce is the higher the power uh, of 2 in the number, the better. And if they are actually the same, then whatever um, un uh, uneven part is bigger. So um, for example, uh, 12 would be better than 7 because uh, tw 12 has an exponent of uh, 2, that is 2. Um, while at the same time the I don't know the the number twelve would also be better than the number nineteen for example right because twelve has a power of two in it so uh, and and nineteen is a prime number doesn't have any power of two in it so the 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 even number wins over the uh, other number even if it, the other number is is bigger right so going back uh, we say that if it's not the case that P A is pb uh, well in that case uh, the return whether or not pa is smaller than pb and here we could also use uh, omega less doesn't really matter here i could use omega less of those even though the, this implementation is probably more efficient um, and otherwise if they are the same well then we have to just compare whether or not the ua is smaller than the ub right makes sense um, so we can actually play this game on all these pairs uh, that we had before so omega squared less on, on these pairs I, I, I redefine them here again so that we see what pairs we're dealing with and suddenly we see that okay uh, 6 is um, smaller than 8 because 8 has so many uh, powers of 2 is, uh, is 2 to the power of 3 um, and but despite the uh, omega order the omega squared order actually says that 12 is better than the 17 right? this is basically the example I just give and also 22 is better than a uh, smaller than um, uh, 20 right because um, 22 happens to have a, a higher uh, power of 2 in it so this is actually pretty different than what we had here. On, on 6 and 8, the orders agree, but on the other things, the orders don't agree. So I will actually show you now 
Like we're going to in the last uh, section of this video draw a small grid and then you get a better feel for how this omega relation judges the um, the uh, natural numbers. So this is going to be a little bit more complicated because I'm going to print uh, like for me <laughs> because I'm going to uh, have to do, do some ASCII art basically. Um, I have written this down so I will copy this join give me a second and I will uh, implement this here um, So what I want to do is I, I want to make a grid where you see which ones are smaller than which ones. Um, this is the start, this is not the ID, but an N. Okay, and here's one missing. So, okay, so far so good. Then print now with four B in range one to M. result is okay here I use the omega squared less and compare um, a's and b's a's and b's for a in range 1 and m and going to print out string of b plus I will make an X if it indeed is smaller so let's see if that checks out and indeed it checks out okay so um, let's look at that so this is a, just a grid of oppa I forgot and um, sorry so one thing that's not how I want it is the B uh, oh I know I see that was the issue. Yeah. So I check now if if this um, if this column is bigger than than this row. Like I, I compare them this number. So I check if B is bigger than A, right? So for example, I check whether uh, two is bigger than than one. Here, yeah. Well, you know, you can less or bigger. You can turn it around, and and indeed, you know, one is two to the power of zero, two is two to the power of one, so indeed it is bigger. Um, and obviously six is also bigger than two, um, but six is also bigger than seven, right? Because six has a power of two in it and seven doesn't. So we can see if we extend this M, like if we go further than just 10, let's go for 30. And then of course these numbers will not make any sense anymore here, uh, but nevertheless the, the the excess will make sense. So if I run this, you know, here the numbers, the 9, 10, 11, and so on and so forth. Um, and here we see, you know, all the even numbers, they are bigger than an infinite uh, num amount of numbers, right? Two is bigger than every second number. Two is bigger than every uneven number. And four is bigger than every uneven number and every number that's just a multiple of two. And so on and so forth. So 16 is in this uh, in this uh, picture here bigger than all numbers except for 16 itself, and and so on and so forth. So uh, the number 24 right is like bigger because it comes so far 
uh, so, so, so late in, the, um, in this list. And what we actually have here is actually a split of all numbers, uh, all natural numbers in an infinite number of groups. So for example, all uneven numbers, they are the worst, they're the smallest. So one is the smallest, three is better than one, but it's still smaller than everything that comes after. Five is the third smallest and it comes after and so on. So you have all uneven numbers. Then you have this jump, you know, this is the first jump from, from the order type omega to omega plus one, um, where uh, the omega plus one would be the next number, like the first number that's bigger than all these two. And then um, two times uh, three, for example, the number six is better than everything, une every uneven number, also better than two, because it's, it's also has the same power uh, and so on and so forth. So then comes 10 or whatnot, you know, you can, you can uh, calculate it. 10 is uh, bigger than uneven, every uneven number. It's also bigger than two and, um, and, and six. But there are then numbers like eight, which are, have a high power of two and they're like much better than all uneven numbers and all also better than all numbers which have just a, one factor of two in it. And, or two factors of two it. So you have actually this, this split and this goes on, you know, the two to the power of thousand is bigger than a bunch of infinite collections, right? And so this is what you see then in, in, in this year. So this, uh, this, these numbers, now they are of course not one, two, three anymore. This, these are like the, the, the first uneven number, the second uneven number, which would be, uh, the three, the third uneven number, which would be five, the fourth uneven number, which would be seven and so on. And all of those are uh, worse than two and uh, six and 10 and so on. And so this goes on uh, an infinite number of times until you arrive actually at omega squared. Uh, like all, all numbers fit here in, into this, um, into the scheme up to this, uh, this order type and you have infinite number of jumps in it. And in this way, uh, you can you can classify uh, orders also on just on countable numbers, but in infinite in on in infinite uh, like with infinite jumps, and this goes on. And uh, this particular um, order type you can represent with like pairs, as we saw. The, the pairs are the power of two, and for example, the the uneven part of the number, right? So this is like this is similar to the set theoretical um, product times of two sets. For example, natural numbers times the natural numbers, the pairs of natural numbers. And, and so this goes on. If you would add more, like uh, omega to the power of three would kind of correspond to three parameters. And if you go to omega to om omega to the power of omega, then you have to and, uh, like pair, like uh, two pairs of arbitrary length and the entries also arbitrary numbers, uh, but they are still countable. So this is like, far beyond infinity, if you, in the ordinal sense, far beyond omega, but this is still smaller than uh, the, the set of all countable ordinals, which is uncountable and more tractable. It's also smaller than uh, in, in cardinal size uh, than two to the power of an infinite uh, set, these two sets. If the continuum hypothesis holds in your model, then these are the, two, the, the same sizes. But my point is that the, the ordinal uh, infinity stages are more refined. And here you saw an, an example. You can encode this in, in, uh, in, in uh, really in piano arithmetic even. The, these, these, uh, these theorists are able to express these order types. This is the, their, their, or, their, their strength as expressed as an, as an ordinal and this is what this is all about. So I, I hope you learned something. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, maybe I, the stuff I re, uh, already talked about now with the, the ordinals and cardinals to bring some order into into this this picture. I might repeat in, in a more like formal uh, video and write something about it. Uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you soon.